Hello friends, this is Durga from uh, IT University and as part of Amazon Web Services, uh, today I will be discussing about storage, uh, primarily cloud storage. So as you have seen um, about EC2, we can provision the instances when we need, process the data and terminate those things when you don't need. So uh, when you actually terminate the instance, whatever storage that is associated with that instance um, especially something called instance store will be deleted automatically and uh, there is another uh, uh, another uh, thing called volumes so you can actually create the volumes uh, uh, off of those instances and you can retain them but they are not usable so you can store the data in volumes even after the instances are uh, terminated but the data in those volumes are not accessible un unless you attach those volumes to some other instance in future and try to process the data. Uh, being said that uh, we need a solution where it is uh, accessible even when instances are down uh, because the same data ha might have to be processed using uh, different uh, uh, servers in, in its life cycle. So for that reason, um, uh, we have to for that reason we have to uh, we we have something. Um, that can be accessed whether the instance is down or not and attaching the uh, device or volume to the all the instances in its life cycle uh, is uh, um, um, one expensive and uh, two um, it can be tedious so for that reason uh, I, uh, so this is how the aws regional data center might look you will have all the ec2 instances and uh, network switches to connect with uh, the external world and also within themselves on top of that there is a, there is a cloud based storage called s3 and uh, there are different classes in s3 or cloud based storage we will see all those things now so the beauty of this is you can actually access the storage in s3 or uh, uh, s3 using uh, uh, S3 protocol over the network uh, without uh, uh, without hosting or uh, without uh, attaching it to any device. You can have the data in S3 and you can actually connect your PC to this uh, S3 uh, S3 storage and you you can access the data irrespective of your uh, EC2 instances are up and running or not. So uh, uh, S3 stands for I will talk about that in a moment and apart from S3 there is a instance store also whenever you provision the instance you will have the local storage uh, in EC2 but the data will be lost immediately and then there is the EBS which can be attached to multiple servers but the data in EBS is only accessible on the servers and also it is readable, readable only when it is attached and it is also expensive whereas S3 is not attached to any one device it can be accessed over network using uh, a, a TCP type S3 protocol as long as you can authenticate uh, to S3 using your access key and uh, secret key I have covered access key and secret key as part of uh, AWS command line interface so the same thing you can use uh, even to access S3 so there are three storage classes um, they started with S3 and then they have added something called Amazon Glacier for backups. So S3 standard is for frequent data that needs to be processed or accessed. S, uh, S3 standard infrequent uh, is the data which need not be uh, accessed that frequently. And then third one is Amazon Glacier. If you don't want to um, get the data immediately whenever it is required, uh, for example the backups um, backup data backup data if you want to restore and if it takes few hours then there is no harm in that uh, uh, when it takes 
two to three hours to restore that data from the backup, it might not harm your business. So those kinds of cold backups, you can dump onto the Amazon Glacier, which is very, very, very cheap uh, storage. And that, so these are the three storage classes that are available as part of this cloud uh, storage in Amazon. So it, as, S3 uses subject storage, uh, no need to worry about too many details about it. So each, uh, the files will be divided into objects and those, uh, those objects will be stored um, in the cluster. And it is secure. Uh, when I say secure, data can be encrypted. Uh, it will be redundant. So there will be multiple copies of the uh, same object on multiple data centers. So if something happens uh, in AWS for main, like maintenance or uh, catastrophic failures, even in those cases, because S3 is redundant, your data will not be lost at all uh, as you will have copies on other data centers. And also it provides security using ACLs. Uh, so uh, not everyone can, uh, means you can control how others can access your data um, by using uh, uh, industry standard concept called ACLs, access control list. You, if you are from Linux background, you will be knowing about it. Anyway, I will not be getting into too many details here. So data is durable, uh, so it will be persistent um, and it is highly scalable. When I say highly scalable, not the data, but the storage is highly scalable. You can store as much data as you want or as, uh, as many files as you want in S3 without worrying about the cap to it. And another advantage of using S3 is for your storage requirements, you, know, you don't need to maintain storage racks um, and invest a lot of money upfront. And uh, uh, no need to worry, no need to hire a storage admin and worry about um, adding more storage uh, whenever it is required. Uh, instead, uh, Amazon will take care of it for you at very low cost. So for small to medium sized companies, um, S3 storage not uh, S3 storage can become very handy uh, for backups for uh, data that needs to be processed using EC2 instances and still access after the data is processed and the clusters are terminated. So there are two ways to deal with uh, uh, S3. As with EC2, you can do it using web console and whatever you can do in web console, everything can be done using command line. Uh, so let's see first with web console. So for web console, you need to log into the cluster. Using your username and password. And then um, as part of the services, uh, we have seen EC2 briefly, we have seen VPC, and now we are talking about S3. So it's a storage and content delivery service. And also there is another service called Glacier. You can click on that and it's, uh, you can use it to backup, uh, to, uh, to copy your cold backups uh, online instead of storing your cold backups somewhere in your data center. Both are uh, um, uh, both can be connected. We will see how we can connect when we actually get into the details about S3. So when you click on S3 here, so let me delete this bucket and uh, delete bucket. So let me start again. Create bucket and here you have to give the uh, bucket name testing uh, web console. You can select a region or you can actually leave it as global and then uh, you can actually set up logging if you want. So what will happen is uh, whenever there are certain things 
uh, done in your bucket, uh, I think that will be logged and uh, uh, send it to you. You can enable it if you want. And uh, then click on create and you have your online bucket. So there is no need to buy a storage rack and have the uh, hard disks um, and, and start storing the data. You can directly use the S3 like this. And then uh, uh, you can click on this and uh, there, is, there is no concept of directories and files here and there is only concept of storage and whatever you try to store it will be stored as buckets uh, sorry objects within the bucket so if you want to upload the data you can uh, you can click on create folder but internally it is not folder it is just naming it as folder but internally it is not folder so you can say testing and then in the folder you can upload click on add files and it will take you to your local file system and you can choose whatever file you want and you can upload i am uploading 6.4 megabytes of data and uh, i can set the details here like permissions uh, and also whether to use infrequent storage or glacier so reduced redundancy storage is nothing but glacier so you can use uh, any of these things okay and uh, i will be using standard storage so uh, there is a cost difference between the three uh, uh, standard storage is a little bit expensive uh, than standard infrequent access storage and uh, reduced redundancy storage is very cheap i think it's a penny per uh, gb you uh, you can set permissions also so you can limit the access to yourself also and if you say make everything public you can actually uh, let others access to your uh, your storage so most of the uh, guys these days actually uploading their software uh, products into s3 and they are providing you the link uh, even the documentation and all those things so you can actually make everything public like this here and then you can actually build a uh, static website uh, to provide access to your storage uh, on s3 or your data on s3 so you can set metadata uh, to uh, to provide the uh, 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 the access I have not used it yet, so I'm not 100% uh, sure about how to use it. But I think here you can actually set metadata in such a way that you can actually uh, access your files um, using a static website and you can start upload. Depending upon the network connectivity between the, your PC and the AWS, it will take time to upload the files. I think you can also have uh, uh, services from AWS where you can have a dedicated network between your data center and AWS and copy data from your data center to AWS in far more effective way. So now the data is copied. Okay, and uh, you can check the properties by, uh, by clicking here you can expand the details and uh, okay this is at uh, folder level you can change the storage class at folder level also or you can actually choose the file and uh, even at files you can change the uh, change the storage classes you can change the permissions you can also change the metadata of your files and then if you go to the bucket itself if you look at if you click on properties there are many, many properties here starting from uh, permissions static website hosting so you can host the website on your bucket and you can enable logging here uh, here also and uh, uh, cross region replication if you want to have a cross region replication you can uh, uh, do this Uh, so what it will happen is uh, now we uh, it's global it can go to any um, uh, any region 
and uh, you have to enable worsening before using cross region replication that's why it is asking to enable worsening but uh, the concept of cross region replication is aws is divided into regions and if you want you can ha actually have the cross region replication so that even if there is a disaster happens on one of the regions still you will, ha you will have data on other regions I think it is uh, it adds a little bit co uh, it adds cost to your uh, storage, um, but I think it's pretty nominal. And uh, uh, then you can actually click on worsening. Worsening is like if you want to copy files with the same names, and uh, then uh, if you have the uh, history of all your files, uh, then uh, uh, you can go back into the history and get the older versions if required. So if you want to enable that, you can uh, do do this by enabling the versioning here. And uh, and also you can actually add bucket policies. Um, uh, like uh, uh, for example, we have three types of uh, storage classes. One is uh, standard, one is standard infrequent, and third one is reduced redundancy. So the, uh, you can actually have the bucket policy by clicking, sorry, not bucket policy. Yeah, it is not bucket policy. Bucket policy is mainly for accessing, uh, giving access to other users. So if you click on life cycle, you can click on add rule and you can uh, say that you, you want to set an, uh, add certain life cycle rules for your whole bucket click on configure rule and here you can say that a particular uh, bucket uh, files in particular bucket has to be in a particular storage class uh, after a certain period of time so for example if you want to upload all the files as, as standard because the latest files are the ones which are most frequently accessed and after 30 days if you want to move it to standard infrequent because you will not be accessing any uh, more uh, that frequently then you can uh, set these rules here and and you can control after how many days the data should be moved to uh, different storage classes and if you want to delete all the files after a year or so you can enable this and you can define it here so once you set these rules you do not need to worry about the life cycle of your uh, uh, files in those bucket it will be taken care by aws itself or s3 of aws itself so these are the main co concepts in S3 and um, it's a very very useful and you will be using uh, many times in future like uh, uh, running the map reduce programs and storing the output uh, we have to use S3 we have to use S3 for, for log files uh, uh, after uh, EMR jobs are, uh, or map reduce jobs are uh, run using Amazon EMR similarly if you use the databases like uh, RDS sorry yeah, DynamoDB even there if you want to take any backup you have to run uh, 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 data pipeline export import commands and those also use S3 yeah, so there are many scenarios where S3 will come handy and it's very important so that's about uh, S3 using uh, AWS web console now we will see how we can um, deal with S3 from command and interface. It is very important uh, uh, that you um, you know command line interface also because uh, uh, many times you have to automate certain things uh, either directly dealing with S3 or as part of the other programs. And uh, uh, to list the files as we have seen earlier so before using this you need to set your access key and uh, security uh, secure access so secret access key by running aws configure command if you want the details you can go to my youtube uh, my earlier videos and uh, there is a playlist called amazon web services and in that there is uh, uh, a sub a special video for configure uh, explicit video for configuring your command line interface which will cover uh, all the details about uh, installation as well as uh, configuring it so that you can use it in many ways 
starting from EC2 to S3 to DynamoDB, data pipeline, for almost all the AWS services, you can use command line interface. Once you set, uh, once you install and uh, configure your command line interface uh, by following these videos. So that being said, um, earlier we have seen uh, uh, there is a command called AWS EC2 in those videos to deal with all EC2 stuff. So S3 uh, is not only EC2, you can actually have uh, S3 without any EC2 instances. It's more of a cloud storage. So for that, they added this additional service called S3. And uh, in command line, you have to use S3 as the main command after AWS. And then uh, you can type help to get help of AWS S3 command. So I'm going to the end directly. So if you see, these are the available commands, CP, LS, MB, MV, RB, RM, Sync, Website. Most of them are self-explanatory, CP is to copy, LS is to list the files, MV to move uh, from one uh, uh, bucket to another bucket within uh, 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 S3, I think, or uh, you can even move from local file system to um, um, S3 also. And RM is to remove. Sync is to sync the directories. So if you have a directory and if you want to sync on regular basis, you can use the sync command uh, so, uh, from uh, to sync your local files, local directories on your local file system to uh, S3. And website is the one uh, which I spoke about uh, earlier. It's uh, you can actually develop a static static website off of your S3 data. And if you want to deal with that, you have to use this website command. And also on top of uh, AWS S3, there is another, let me, there is another command called AWS S3 API. So if you want to, uh, if you want to develop certain things, you need to use this S3 API command. So these are the, uh, the so so uh, um, when I actually covered using Web Console, I have spoken about uh, uh, not only creating the buckets, um, but also uh, to do additional things like setting the ACLs for security purposes, setting the life cycle uh, uh, from uh, to move data from S3 standard to S3 standard infrequent to um, and reduce redundancy. All those commands are not available as part of S3 alone. So if you want to do those advanced stuff, you have to use this S3 API command and it will provide you a lot more uh, uh, features um, to deal with it. So you can actually set or get the ACLs. Um, you can do, uh, you can uh, uh, set or delete the bucket lifecycle, uh, set the policies. So whatever you have seen, in uh, uh, in the web console on the detail section of your bucket everything can be done using s3 api so there are two command line uh, commands under aws to deal with s3 one is s3 and the other one is s3 api um, uh, to get started s3 is more than enough but for more advanced use you have to explore s3 api also and you can actually google it by saying amazon web services command line interface s3 api and uh, you will get uh, details or you can actually do the help and understand uh, and try to get the syntax of those commands uh, as long as you are familiar with this that is more than enough to get started okay so um, I came out I will just demonstrate how we can actually create a uh, bucket you can either use s3 or s3 api to create the buckets so I will be using s3 and uh, let me go to help so I have explained uh, all the important commands, I mean it's all the self-explanatory commands like CP, LS, MV, RM, Sync, etc. But there are two new commands called MB and RB. MB stands for make bucket, RB stands for remove bucket. So if you want to create a new bucket, you have to use MB. If you want to remove, you have to use RB. Okay. So I'm coming out of it. So I want to create a bucket, AWS, S3, testing. AWS CLI is my bucket name. So I have to say MB to make the bucket. 
it should use s3 path not like this so i have to give s3 column slash slash but to list the files you don't need to give that s3 protocol only when you are trying to make the bucket or remove the bucket you have to use this s3 protocol it will inherently take it when you run aws s3 commands when you try to list the files it will inherently take that s3 uh, while running those commands so if you want to list the files you just type ls and hit enter and it will return testing aws cli and testing web console because we have created um, a, uh, a bucket um, yeah, using web console also and now to copy the files let me i think i already have this testing file now let me do this So let me copy this AWS CLI directory to to the bucket. So my bucket name is testing AWS CLI. Okay, so I'm using AWS S3 CP, and I want to copy the directory AWS CLI into the bucket testing AWS CLI, and hit enter. I have to give the S3 path here, otherwise it does not know where to copy and hit enter. AWS S3 CP help. So if you want to get more help about your command, you can use this approach aws s3 and the sub command and then help okay as it is directory i have to um, do it recursively so i have to use this recursive parameter okay so now let me run this command now the file is copied and now let me do AWS S3 LS testing AWS CLI. Here you don't need to give S3. In case of CP, you can actually copy files from local file system to S3 or S3 to local file system. So one will be the local file system and the other one is the, the S3 or it can be S3 to S3 also. So to, to differentiate between the local file system and S3, you have to uh, give S3 as a protocol uh, for the uh, s3 locations whereas for local file system you cannot do that so this s3 will differentiate between the local file system and the uh, s3 bucket so now you can see that file is copied and you can also go to the web console and uh, Click on all buckets or refresh it, and you can see both the buckets here. And this is web console testing, and this is the file which is uploaded through web console. And if you go to all buckets now and click on testing AWS CLI, you can see the temp file here. So uh, here. Um, when i do cp it did not copy the directory here it, it only copied the files from uh, this one into this location i think you can change the behavior by going through the help of the cp command i don't want to get into uh, the details how you you have to copy and, uh, and the directory with the name probably use the sync command or and there should be some uh, control argument under cp also anyway I will not be going into those details. Now, if I want to just remove the S3 bucket, use AWS S3 RB remove bucket, and uh, I want to remove testing AWS CLI. Again, we have to give S3 path here. For MB and RB, even though there are no other file systems associated with it, uh, it is. Uh, um, 
you, you need to pass this S3 protocol. I think I have to give recursive here or force. I think it's force. Yeah. Now the bucket is deleted. And now if you refresh it here, there is only one bucket i am deleting this one also because it it costs money delete bucket we need to give the bucket name here console and delete so that is it about s3 a very very important concept and we will be using uh, in many places going forward um, within the context of Amazon Web Services and I hope you are enjoying the content so far on my channel if you like this video please click on the like button if you uh, if you want to provide me the feedback or ask any technical questions please use the comment section of the video and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will you will see a lot more content with respect to in, uh, IT starting from Hadoop, Big Data, uh, AWS and many other technologies over time. Thank you. Bye.